my dear 12th class students today we will go through a story titled as hapni by alan patton alan patton became famous in 1948 with his first novel cry the beloved country he was born in south africa as a novelist he has great power but his first concern is for the improvement of race relations and the penal system in his country and all his writing is directed to this end for 13 years he was principal of large boys reformatory in johannesburg and and it is clearly from this experience that hapni is told so uh, in this story we can see different themes here like need of family love loneliness consequences of strict segregation based on the color of one's skin can be seen there we have three main characters in this story uh, the first character hapni is a 12 year old boy he is a waif means he is homeless neglected child he wished to have a family and later he died of a disease tuberculosis then we have narrator who is principal at the reformatory school he lived to be nice to the boys and then we have mrs marmain who is a decent and homely woman and and, and she adopted hapni at last so this is the story of a small boy whose name is hapni who had been studying in the reformatory institution at johannesburg reformatory is a place and institution or a kind of house for young people who have broken the law or rule or maybe they are involved in some little crimes like uh, smoking stealing so they are sent there for a kind of training or correcting them so it's basically an alternative to prison uh the author alan patton was the principal of johannesburg's reformatory johannesburg is the largest city in south africa so there was a reformatory center and uh, alan patton was principal of that reformatory institution so the children who had committed crimes were sent for the purpose of reform for the purpose of correcting them the writer alan patton kept a close watch on the activities of these boys secretly he wanted to be affectionate towards them he wanted to be very friendly with them so that he could control them easily so there were 600 boys at the reformatory about one third were from 10 to 14 years of age the writer wanted to take them away to an industrial kind of school he believes that such an industrial school would have been a good thing because uh, because he says that their crimes their offenses are very small very insignificant he didn't want to treat them like criminals he uh, he would have uh, he want to treat them in a good manner he would have like to be he says that he would have like to be the principal of such school where he would handle where he would deal these boys with love with affection with a friend, friendly kind of nature with warmth and and he says it would have been uh, an easier job to to change them to mold them with love with affection and it was a kind of natural and easy process so the uh, writer watched them on parade or in school or at football and they would observe the author watchfully not directly but secretly sometimes the writer would make them uh, small signs of recognition means uh, the it was a kind of situation where uh, uh, where actually the writer is conveying the students oh i have found you seeing you were looking at me and this recognition would satisfy them this recognition would satisfy the boys so that they would give the full attention to the event the writer felt that there was a kind of secret relationship between him and the boys he says uh, had they been his own children he would have given a greater expression of this love but but he was principal out there he was no doubt his approach was friendly too but he had to maintain a balance also uh, 
So at parade, the author often uh, moved through the parade and would stand by one of them and sometimes he would tweak somebody's air and the boy would give a brief smile uh, or frown with still greater concentration. So on a Sunday afternoons when the author was on duty, he would take his car to the reformatory and watched the free boys being released out at the gate. So when this uh, this period uh, was over for some of boys, when they they are found like yes, they have corrected their behavior. They there is a kind of reform. Uh, they have formed themselves. There is a change in their behavior. They have become a good child, good person now. So th then was it was the time to release them so when they were released and there were so many boys uh, who were not free who would tell each other that in so many weeks i will be signed out too so there were uh, some uh, small boys who kept watching uh, this uh, uh, who kept watching these boys who were uh, about to release so uh, all, uh, some of the small boys would often talk to each other and and writer says i would often take them in the car turn by turn and and they would go out to the Porsche room road to the Baragwand crossroad and come back by the van hekras road to the reformatory the author would talk to them about their families, about their parents, about their sisters and brothers while, while giving them a ride and he would pretend to know nothing of the place they have come from. But the author already knew each and every fact about about each and every boy who was there in the uh, reformatory but while taking them uh, for a ride uh, he uh, had a conversation with them he would have a conversation with them about their families family background studies and the neighborhood sisters brothers siblings but the author pretend as if he doesn't know anything as he uh, know nothing about the places they have come from like Durban post Elizabeth uh, or other places so one of the small boy was uh, a penny and he was about 12 years old he came from bloom fountain and was a bit talkative means he was talking uh, much than other boys so his mother worked in a white person's house and he had two brothers and two sisters his brother were Richard and DK and his sister Anna and Mina. In next part, we will learn about Hapni.